Final Four. So if you are in Dallas this weekend, there's some things you need to know. It is happening right in Dallas. The men are playing in Houston and the women are right here. The women's Final Four is projected to pump $35 million into our economy. Virginia Tech takes on LSU. That's at six. That's followed by South Carolina versus Iowa at 830. The games are going to be played at the American Airlines Center where fan experience events are underway. They will continue, by the way, until the championship game on Sunday. Two great games tonight, four great teams, and I want to bring in Howard Megdahl, host of Locked On Women's Basketball Podcast, who is here in Dallas for the Final Four. So good morning to you. Good morning. Delighted to be here. Uh, we are delighted to have you. And so first, you have been checking out all the activities around the Final Four. What are your thoughts so far on what you're seeing? It's wonderful. I, you know, I've been in Dallas for Final Fours before, back in 2017, uh, when South Carolina won it all. And just, you know, 20 Town, just everything that's done is absolutely top notch. It's always great to be here. And of course, we have to talk the games, right? There's some huge matchups coming up. So number one seed, South Carolina, is looking to go undefeated this season. I know that they had somewhat of a, a sad year last year because they couldn't quite pull it through. Do you think they can do it this year? Well, South Carolina, they, they did ultimately win the championship this year, uh, or last year, rather. But this year has a chance to do not just that, but go undefeated in the process. And so to have those back-to-back -back titles would really put a legacy in place for what Aaliyah Boston and Dawn Staley have been able to do and build over this time ahead of what will be, in all likelihood, Boston is the number one pick in the 2023 WNBA draft. But this team, top to bottom, just the degree of depth they have, their players 10-11 off the bench are even able to come through and have star turns for them as well. And let's talk about, about those stars in women's basketball right now because a huge weapon on the opposite team is Iowa's Caitlin Clark, just named AP Player of the Year. How much does she bring to the table here? She brings a little bit of everything. You know, the thing about Caitlin Clark is that we haven't really seen someone like her before. We have not seen somebody who scores at the level Diana Tarazi did, who also manages to dish the ball out better and more effectively, even if you can believe it, than Sue Bird, and rebounds the way a forward would, even though she's playing point guard for Iowa. So does a little bit of everything. You know, a triple-double in the Elite Eight, led by 41 points, Ooh. to get Iowa here is just a remarkable next-level performance. We're going to be seeing Caitlin Clark dominate in this game for the next 15 years. And let's talk about Caitlin Clark just for a second here, because I think it takes somewhat of, of a star, a star base, to kind of move the, the sport forward a bit. I mean, do you feel like she's doing that for women's basketball right now? I think she is part of a larger wave. To me, obviously, get, there are more eyes on the sport than ever before. You're already seeing the ratings go up. You're seeing this be sold out. But it's been that way for a while. And I don't think we can rely on any one player to do that. What I do think is that having a Caitlin Clark present while the game is growing allows it to grow even faster. All right, I like it. And we cannot forget about LSU and Virginia Tech. LSU features a familiar face to us here, LSU coach Kim Mulkey, who used to coach Baylor um, right in our, you know, couple mile radius right here. Can you talk a little bit about that matchup? Just a remarkable thing, you know, Kim having them in the Final Four in what is year two at LSU, a program that had really struggled for the better part of a decade plus. And you compare them to Virginia Tech, First timers here, but Kenny Brooks talked to us yesterday about the fact that, look, they are a number one seed and they were expected to be here, even though they're not getting the same level of attention. If any of your viewers have not seen Georgia Amor perform in person, their do it all guard, who is uh, north of 20 points in each of her last six games, dishes the ball really, really well. Elizabeth Kitley, her counterpart inside, just a really fun team. That early game is not one that anybody should sleep on. And, you know, those ticket prices show it, right? That's right. It's almost as high as Taylor Swift. And that's a great point. We've got Taylor Swift here. We got, of course, the women's college NCAA finals here. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Howard. And to get all of your Women's Final Four news and notes throughout the weekend uh, from Locked on Women's Basketball, it is available wherever you get your podcasts.